Um, Minister, I'd first like to welcome you to this House and congratulate you on your new role. And as a spokesperson on uh, climate, communications, energy and natural resources, I'm really looking forward to working with, alongside you in the next couple of years. And indeed, I was speaking with a former colleague of yours just a couple of hours ago in Dundalk, a former member of this House, uh, Senator Mark Deary, who I worked very closely with on Louth County Council. I had a wonderful relationship both with him and Councillor Marianne Butler. So really looking forward to working with you, Minister, in the next couple of years. Um, the legislation today as, uh, is pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. We're repurposing the levy, uh, the NOR levy, and directing it towards funding for much more worthwhile projects under the Climate Action Fund. And the Climate Action Fund is going to support initiatives that are really going to contribute to the achievement of Ireland's climate uh, and, more importantly, our energy targets. And it offers the potential, when I was looking at it last night, it really offers the potential for interventions, which, you know, without this fund, the funding wouldn't be available for. And, and I think that's a very important point that we all actually have to recognise when we think about that, because uh, these projects and the seven projects that we've been talking about, they would not be able to go ahead otherwise without the funding uh, from this particular body. And I think that's very important to mention. And Minister, I was actually listening to the second stage speeches uh, in the other house during the week in the Convention Centre, uh, and I actually felt it was quite disingenuous as well, listening to some of the comments made by members there, who tried to say that of the seven projects were a bit too, I suppose, Dublin-centric. But of course that fits into their narrative that they want to play to show that rural Ireland is somehow missing out. And as someone who's from County Louth and the town of Dundalk, I, I can certainly say that that is not the case uh, with this legislation. Uh, because, and I'll be quite clear about it, the expressions of interest from the Climate Action Fund w were clear. And just to quote it so I can put it on the record of this House, the Department is not selecting or focusing any type of organisation, project or technology or geographical area. The CAF is not in the style of a tendering process. Instead, it's up to the organisations themselves to apply what, what they believe is the best climate action idea. What they believe is the best climate action idea. And fundamentally, the CAF is a competitive process in which the department seeks to support a project or a group of projects that will have the best impact across a range of indicators in achieving a low carbon climate resilient economy. Uh, that is what they said themselves in black and white. So I think it's very disingenuous for members of, of the other place to try and suggest otherwise. Uh, and indeed, Minister, of the seven projects that were approved already, three of them really stand out to mind for, for myself that I, that I think are quite impressive. The first one was the 15 million investment, Minister, for the new hybrid power packs for the intercity rail cars. This was already trialled uh, with them and the concept it, it went very well and the investment is now going to be rolled out to all of our intercity rail fleets. So that's taking anyone on a train from Dundalk into Dublin or Wexford into Dublin or Athlone into Dublin or Cork or Limerick equally. Um, and that's going to benefit, uh, that's going to really reduce diesel use, it's going to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and it's going to benefit thousands of commuters at the same time. Uh, equally, Minister, the, the second point that I really liked about it was the local authority public lighting uh, energy efficient project, which is the concept of retrofitting 320, 600,000 uh, non-LED lights right around the country. And I've already seen how effective this is in my own part of the world in County Louth, where Louth County Council have embarked on a really ambitious project where they're replacing nearly all of them, and they're doing so well at it. And I really think the, the, the County Council there have to be commended about that project. And the project alone, and I think this is the most important point to, to mention about non-LED lights, the project alone is going to see an emission reduction of over 40,000 tonnes, 40,000 tonnes of CO2 from an electricity generation per annum. Uh, Minister, the third point that I wanted to raise about the seven projects, which I think is, is really good and something that I've always had a, a strong interest on throughout my time in politics, is the 10 million for the ESB e-cars. That's going to essentially help develop um, a nationwide charging system uh, right across the country. I, I think this is perhaps one of the most important parts of what the Climate Fund is actually going to be able to do because I, I think it's crucial that we even direct more funding towards this because I felt, like I'm 29 years of age, I look around at my own friends and I, and I think that... Um, not until someone can realistically get from Dublin to Cork uh, without battery anxiety or without the fear of if I get to Port Leash and I go into charge, uh, is, is one of the charging stations not going to be working? Is someone going to be parked in the charging station while they're having their lunch inside? So the only way we can uh, change the culture of people's minds to say that this is the way to go and bring people with us is to pump so much funding into electric charging uh, vehicle areas um, so that the concept of battery anxiety will, will be a thing of the past, that people won't even consider it when they're talking about uh, buying an e-car. So the more charging points we can create, uh, the quicker, the better, in, in my opinion, because it will take an effort to change people's minds uh, and to bring them along with us. And the final point about that, and it's actually a point I made uh, when I was on Louth County Council recently, 
is about, I actually think it's very important that local authorities, Minister, come to you with a roadmap of their own electoral, of their own uh, local authorities, their own counties, their own administration areas, and say, Minister, these, if you give us X amount of money tomorrow morning, this is where, exactly where we are going to roll out our electric charging points. And I think it would actually be incumbent, Minister, on you yourself and your department to turn around and say, OK, we're going to do this, providing you put in X amount of charging spaces and give them an, a, a time frame that they have to be completed by this point, otherwise you lose the funding. And that puts the onus back on the local authorities to really deliver this at a local level, where, with all due respect, Minister, um, they, they, they know best. So there are just three projects out of the seven that I mentioned uh, that will benefit everybody on this island, whether you're living in urban Dublin city centre or whether you're living up a side of the mountain down in Kerry. It's going to benefit everybody. And I think I really want to put that on the record of this house because I think it is so disingenuous for other people for their own political narratives to try and suggest to try and suggest otherwise, uh, Minister. Um, finally, just to wrap up, uh, and I know I have two, minute, two minutes left, unlike yesterday, Cahirlock, <laughs> when the clock was going the other way. But my, my point is, no, it's all right. I'll be like Cicero. I'll be brief, as you've said yourself, uh, Cahirlock. Um, but to, to just really wrap up, Minister, um, the, the, the point of this Climate Action Fund and reducing this NOR levy is so we can actually create way more projects that are so, more, so much more sustainable, like the seven projects that have been already outlined, that people from communities can actually come to government, come to the department and say, we've got an idea, let's go with it, let's run with it. It's such a, it's such a wonderful way to engage local communities. And it is definitely one of the big uh, vehicles that we can use that's going to have a reduction on greenhouse gas emissions over the next 10 years in this country. And I think it's important, finally, to stress that these projects would find it very difficult uh, Minister, very difficult to find funding otherwise. So Minister, in conclusion and to wrap up, I think this is really forward-thinking legislation. Um, uh, as, as Senator Fitzpatrick said, it's quite technical as well, but the, the point about it is, and I, I, it's actually such a pleasure to have it in our really first week properly sitting in the Senate, because that shows the urgency behind this bill, Minister, and shows how committed you are to it. So, Minister, I would like to say, uh, commend you for taking this bill to this House so quickly. It's a much needed measure, uh, and I really would like to put on the record, I find it very hard to see how anyone could disagree with it, Minister, and the sooner we get it through this House, the better. So, thank you.